In this video, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on the Dava network and explain why I foresee this project emerging as a true unicorn in the defense space. With roughly a third of the global population lacking internet connectivity, the Dava network is set out to solve this problem by building out a decentralized Wi-Fi network. Now, I have to say, I never gave much credence to the D-Wire decentralized Wi-Fi concept because being from the US, broadband and Wi-Fi connections are very accessible. So I had a really hard time wrapping my head around the business case for a decentralized Wi-Fi network. But after having several people in the community reach out telling me that I should check out this project and doing my due diligence, I have to say my view on the matter has certainly shifted. That's because India, the market that the Dava network is primarily focused on, is not only massive with a population of over 1.4 billion people, but their infrastructure for connectivity is severely lacking. So there is a huge problem that needs to be addressed. The Dava team also has connections on both a government and local level after being an internet service provider in India for over eight years. And using groundbreaking technology that they've developed and the power of Deepin, I do believe they are uniquely positioned to be the market leaders in what is expected to be a market with 70 to $80 billion in annual revenue. Also worth noting that they have financial backing from the likes of borderless and multi-coin capital amongst others. Oh, and we're super early here, by the way, because they have not yet launched their token. And that is expected to take place later in Q1. Now, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about this project. But before I get started, I have to remind you, nothing in this video is financial advice. And you should always do your own research. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. As I let off with, India has a population of over 1.4 billion people. They also happen to be the largest data users in the world, which really shouldn't be a surprise when you consider that 70% of their population is under the age of 35. What may surprise you, however, is that only 5% of the population has access to broadband and Wi-Fi. To put this into perspective, when you look at China, who has a population very similar to that of India, they have over 600 million Wi-Fi hotspots. India only has 30 million. And this lack of broadband and Wi-Fi infrastructure has led to the population turning to cellular plans for their data needs, with many of them purchasing multiple SIM cards just to meet their monthly demand. Cellular penetration in the country, while it is better than Wi-Fi, is still only at 50%. And with data consumption roughly doubling year over year, India has a massive problem because the telecommunication infrastructure cannot keep up with demand. And after 30 years of the Indian government burning hundreds of billions of dollars in an attempt to build out both cellular and broadband infrastructure, they are now scrambling for a solution to this problem and are turning to the private sector for help. And as I let off with, the Dub Network has a close working relationship with the Indian government. In fact, they actually helped draft the telecom policy for India. They also happen to be uniquely positioned to solve this problem, but to understand how they intend to do so, we need to dig into how the infrastructure has been built out to this point. Now, India has fiber optic cable coming in from the ocean on both sides of the country. And one thing the Indian government has done well is building out the baseline infrastructure as they have fiber optic cables running underneath all of the highways and railroads across the country. And in many cases, it's actually been built out to the edge of the cities and towns. But that is where the true bottleneck comes into play, the middle mile and last mile infrastructure. The middle mile is taking the internet from the edge of the city or town to the buildings. And the last mile is then bringing it into the buildings and storefronts to install the service itself. And this is where the Daba network can thrive and where the local relationships and the hardware I touched on comes into play. Now, starting with the local relationships, as I stated earlier, the Daba network was an internet service provider for over eight years. Now, between being an ISP and helping the Indian government draft up the telecom policy, they developed many close relationships with local cable operators or LCOs. To describe what an LCO is, think about someone in their 30s or 40s that's created a business where they bring satellite cable TV to a few hundred subscribers in their local area. Well, there are about 150,000 of these LCOs across India. And in recent years, their businesses have been seriously 
threatened because just like we're seeing in other parts of the world, people are starting to cut the cord and move away from cable in lieu of streaming services. As a result, these LCOs are majorly struggling and in need to shift their business model. Now, in areas where that middle mile infrastructure has been built out and there is internet accessibility built out throughout the city or town, a lot of these LCOs have started to shift to becoming miniature internet service providers, but they have struggled to compete with the larger ISPs on price. And in many cases, they lack the capital to expand their networks. And this is where the Daba network comes into play. And they're serving as somewhat of a lifeline for these LCOs. The Daba network is aggregating these LCOs under their umbrella, which allows them to buy broadband at scale. And they can then get wholesale rates, which flow down to these LCOs and allow them to compete on price with the larger ISPs. And by using the DPIN model, which I'll touch on more in a minute, they're able to raise the capital that's necessary to expand their networks. These local cable operators also have personal relationships with the people in their communities so they can act as a sales arm. The end result is that there is a huge backlog of LCOs on a wait list to join the Daba network. And on the subscriber side, well, they have more demand than they can keep up with, which is certainly a good problem to have. But looking forward, what about the LCOs that are in regions that don't have that middle mile infrastructure built out? Well, that's where that proprietary hardware that I mentioned earlier comes into play and where the next stage of expansion will come for the Daba network. Daba previously worked with Google on something called Project Loon, where they were using stratospheric helium balloons to distribute wireless internet. Now, this project did end up getting shut down, but some of the technology that was used remained in development, specifically something called FSOC, or Free Space Optical Communications Links. And it's currently being used to provide high-speed internet to people in Africa. Now, the concept uses a point-to-point -point laser system where you can actually create a link between two points with clear line of sight to deliver broadband. And Daba has invested in the R&D to create their own version of this technology at a fraction of the cost. And they plan to begin rolling it out later this year. This is going to allow them to build out that middle mile infrastructure in a very cost effective way. At the edge of the city or town, they'll be able to actually beam the broadband to collectors on rooftops throughout the town or city. And we aren't talking about minor savings here. As they estimate, it'll not only be up to 75 times cheaper, but also also up to 40 times faster. For example, to run fiber optic cable to a town of say 200,000 people, it would traditionally take at least five years. And due to the labor hours that are necessary and the local permitting and red tape, it could cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Using this laser technology, they can now accomplish the same feat in a matter of a few weeks with a small crew, little to no permitting at a fraction of the cost. And these LCOs will be equipped with this hardware and the software that will enable them to build out the infrastructure for their communities. And the DPIN model will help them with the capital that's necessary to expand their network. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. So how can someone like you or me participate in this network? Well, if you go to their website, and I'll also link this in the video description below, you'll see you can purchase one of their Wi-Fi hotspots for just under $200. And this hotspot will be installed at the subscriber's home or business and you'll start to earn their native DVD token for doing so. Now, this is a much different experience than other deep end projects you may have participated in. Because as opposed to you buying the hardware and having to find a location for it and installing it and maintaining it, well, in this case, it's all done for you. And this is really genius on many levels. Because with those other projects, you end up having a huge supply and demand imbalance and major issues around quality control. Many areas would become oversaturated and you'd end up having coverage in areas with no demand. In the case of the Daba network, they will only be installing at places where they already have a subscriber and it will be installed and maintained professionally by an LCO that's gone through their extensive vetting process. Now, this LCO will get a percentage, say 10 or 20% of the tokens that are generated by that hotspot, but this is the incentive for them holding up their end of the deal. And this structure will allow the Daba network to not only efficiently build out a structure that balances supply and demand, but also ensures quality and uptime. And I do believe we are going to see more deep end projects in the future follow this model. Now they have purposely throttled their growth to this point to make sure the system is completely ironed out before a rapid expansion. But you'll see here in season one, they sold a thousand units. And in season two, which is currently open, they're selling a total of 10,000 units. But I do expect this is going to fill up pretty quickly because after placing an order just a couple of days ago, looks like 200 spots have filled up. The ordering process is super easy, by the way. It takes all of a few minutes. And as we get closer to TGE or the token generation events, you'll be able to select your location in your LCO that does the install. And I do plan to do a follow-up video that walks through those steps. But for being in these early stages, you actually earn Genesis tokens, which will then 
be able to be redeemed for the DVD token once it's launched. Speaking of the token launch, that is expected to take place later in Q1. And I do plan to do a follow-up video that dissects the tokenomics in a lot more detail. But the main thing I want to focus on right now is the fact that the team's primary focus is to drive utility and demand to the token. And this is something we've seen a lot of other projects really miss the mark on. And the end result is that there's way too much selling pressure and not enough buying pressure to offset it. I do not expect that to be the case with the DBD token. That's because revenue coming into the project will result in token burns. And keep in mind, these are only going to be installed at places where they have subscription revenue coming in. There's also going to be $100 of DBT that's necessary to onboard new hotspots, and they're planning on having a staking mechanism that will go towards building out new regions. But speaking of revenue, let's talk about revenue growth opportunities and the future roadmap. Now, the number one driver of revenue will obviously be subscription services for homeowners and businesses. I believe the basic subscription is expected to come in around $10 to $15 per month. But keep in mind, for a lot of these people, it's going to be the first time they've ever had access to Wi-Fi. And many of them have relied solely on their cell phones. So as they start to buy laptops and move to streaming services and their data usage increases, well, they'll need to increase their data plan. And as such, the revenue that comes with that will increase. There will also be a public Wi-Fi subscription because these hotspots not only have a private key for your personal use, but will also be able to transmit a signal out for public use. Again, driving more revenue. The second thing they're looking to do is an application layer. So if you think about when you download applications and you log in with your Facebook, the same concept, except that you use your Daba network credentials to log in. And the third thing is something I find super interesting Interesting, and that is that they're going to act as a layer zero or the base layer for other projects. In fact, they're already doing this. They recently partnered with WeatherXM, which is a project I covered in a recent video, but they're deploying a thousand weather stations in conjunction with their hotspot installations. And I do expect there will be a lot of other partnerships that are announced in the future. But think about this from an investor standpoint. You'll be able to go to the Daba Network website, purchase your Wi-Fi hotspot, choose your location for it to be installed, select your LCO to do the installation installation, then you'll be able to add on other deep end projects to be installed at the same time, which will allow you to earn additional tokens. Now, as far as milestones go, their goal is to hit 100,000 hotspots by the end of the year. And considering the fact that the Indian government is looking to add hundreds of millions of these in the coming years, there will be no shortage of growth opportunity. And once they have this system fully ironed out and built out in India, they do expect to take the same model to emerging countries and other parts of the world. So the sky is truly the limit here. And in summary, they are tackling a market that has a massive population and a huge problem that needs to be addressed and the GDP that can support the business case. They have the necessary expertise and connections at both the government and local levels and the proprietary hardware to become the market leaders. And they're harnessing the power of Deepin to make it all happen. And it's for all of those reasons that I do believe the Daba Network is going to be one of the most successful Deepin projects to date, to the extent that I predict there will be case studies written about this project that highlight the true power of Deepin. In. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. As always, I appreciate your viewership signing off. This is Bradley Meyer with the Deep End Connection.